talking about how to fill out an experimental design diagram. One of the things that I want to point out about this experimental design diagram is this is like the format that might be presented in a paper, but the reality is what the public sees versus what you as a scientist do are slightly or in kind of a different order. So the first thing we're going to do is she's going to number one, two, three, four. Go ahead and do that. It's already ready to go. So what we want with this paper, one, two, three, all right? We're going to use the example we did with the helicopters, and we're going to put it, transfer it to this experimental design format, okay? So the first thing you do is you need to identify the independent variable and the dependent variable, okay? So what was our in, independent and dependent variable for the helicopter? Yes? The independent variable was how much what you added in the dependent variable in the class of the class. Okay, so the independent variable was the mass of the, increasing the mass of the helicopter, and the dependent variable was the mat weight of the uh, helicopter. Hang on a second. So we'll go ahead and uh, pause and I'm going to and write that in. So we've labeled the independent dependent variable right here. Increasing the mass of the helicopter, the speed of the helicopter. All right. Now we can write a proper title and a proper hypothesis. So we're going to go ahead and you guys write it in your seat. We'll write it up here and we'll, come, we'll reconvene in a moment. So let's do that. All right, so what have we done? We have written the ink. We wrote the IV. We wrote the DV. Then we write a title. Notice, again, the title doesn't say what's going to happen. It's just telling you what the IV and DV are. Then this is a known quantity, increasing the mass. The helicopter is a known mass. The speed of the helicopter is a known, but the prediction is this part right here. So we're going to say, go and write in increase. And then I want to put a little star next to it in red so we can know the difference. So go ahead and write that in. We're still recording. So go ahead. Right. All right. This part right here that I'm doing a bad draw, job of putting a star, that's the prediction part. Every one of these, this is a known quantity increasing the mass. We know how much mass, and we measured it before we did the experiment. We know uh, we did the speed of the helicopter. Well, we know that we can measure that, So, but we know that's something that will measure that becomes the dependent variable. This is the only part that is the testable question. That's the one where you actually have to test and drop that helicopter and measure the results. Okay? So this, now, go ahead and write a number five there, and I'm going to stop for a second. This is the part you may have not done. So she, this is how you set up a, this is the organization chart. So she's going to write five here. Right? All right. And then we're going to draw some columns. So right, control and go on. All right. Underneath it, she's got a little line here. And that's where you write the number of trials. How many trials did we do? Three. Three, so write three there, and then just write one clip, two clip, three clip. Let's see, we didn't see two paper clips with three, but she's going to go and fill that in. And you stop at three. And add in the trials like you did for control. All right, so this right here is your organization chart. This isn't a data table. This is a way to organize and say, all right, I'm going to list everything that I'm going to test. I'm going to test my control. I want to do it three trials. Well, I better do it three trials for the other ones. The reality is for settings here, you have to do 10 trials for it to be considered valid. All right, so we have to do all these trials. The key thing is, and on a quiz, I would put this here. I expect you to tell me IV, and then put how many trials based on the problems. <coughs> The problem will tell you 
uh, X number of trials or five groups did, every number of group that did the experiment, that's a trial. And we'll talk about how you can identify trials. That, that requires a couple of the labs we're going to do. All right. Now, we will list constant. And we want to talk about constant next and results and conclusion. So we're going to just fill that in. All right. So now we're going to finish this video um, by talking about the last couple things. Number six is the constant. Pay close attention. This right here is what I've starred. The most important constant is the one that can become a variable. And look at this, include values. If I give a word problem and there's a constant there and they tell you the value, I expect you to point that. I point it out, to write about it. All right, uh, seven is the results. And then eight is the conclusion, yes, no statement. It's the hypothesis. The hypothesis is valid or it's not valid. Okay, so that's our experimental design here. Let me point out one more thing. Notice the numbers. The whole idea of this was to show the order of operations. The first thing that you do is you don't come up, write a conclusion. That's bad science. You come up with, you design your experiment. You will come up with the IV, the DV. You'll write your title, your hypothesis. You organize it through what I call step five over here. And then, do, after you've done, when, when you've done the experiment, you'll have a results table and a conclusion. And that is our experimental design diagram.